Hi Hopefuls, I hope that you're well. Raquel, I'm so excited that you got your hands on the book. I'm just so happy that you've been able to get started on reading it. I know that it's been a very frustrating path to get to this point. Katie Rebecca, you are absolutely vibrating wanting to talk about this book and I'm so, I'm so excited. However, I'm about to pass you off to Pass Sam who is not quite finished with the book so I'm gonna let her talk first and then I will circle back to some of your questions that you read out of the back of your copy of the book where it had the book club questions so I will answer that when she is done. I have read up to page 260 at the point of recording this. So from the last time that I've read it's taken us through all of Evelyn's marriage to Rick's North, the split, the marriage to Harry, the birth of Connor, the getting back together with Celia, and in one chapter at the very end on page 224 there was just like the tiniest little passage from Monique when it was when it's being told from her point of view. I have no idea that in less than a week Evelyn Hugo will finish her story and I'll find out what this has all been about and I will hate her so much that I'll be truly afraid I might kill her. <sighs> I've not gotten to the point yet in this book that says what why why she chose Monique to write her story. I did however just get to the point where she's going to do a movie with Don Adler, her first husband, and they're just having such a wonderful time, like the four of them, um, Celia, Harry, John, and Evelyn, like raising Connor, they're celebrating Harry's birthday, they're out on the beach just like having a lovely time. She said, it was one of the last times we were all together, laughing, smiling, happy, a family, because after that, I ruined it. And then I've stopped myself from like reading too much too fast because I wanted to like comment on it this way. So I have enough <laughs> entries for these videos because I have five Tuesdays in October. So like taking my time. Oh my gosh. So it is currently October 6th for me right now, but it's probably like the middle of October for you. But. So I'm, I'm excited that now I've recorded this, I can get back to reading more. So in real time, I have finished the book. I finished it later that day that that last clip you just watched was from. So I'm not gonna talk about my final thoughts and feelings on the completed book. I'm gonna save that for next week, but I will answer one of the questions that you had read from your, from the back of your copy, which was, do you think that Evelyn is a reliable narrator? And I believe that she, to at least in her perception, is being true and 100% honest every time she decides to speak on a topic. I think everything that she has said, she experienced or perceived as having happened to her or perceiving that's how that other person truly really was to her. And I think that by omitting some stories or not answering some questions was her way of making sure that she never lied about anything. I feel like whenever she chose to speak on something or someone, she was being honest because she had nothing left to lose. She had nobody close to her anymore. She felt like everyone that she loved is gone. There's no one left to protect, not even herself at this point. The only thing I could have seen her maybe lying about would be around Monique. And if she didn't feel so strongly that Monique needed to know the truth, I don't think Monique would have ever known the truth from her. So I think that whenever she chose to speak, it was the truth and it was 100% her lived experience. And anything that she chose to omit was something that she did not feel that she could tell the truth about or it wasn't going to impact anyone positively or just add more awfulness into the world. Like she said that she was awful and she was awful. She did a lot of awful things, but that she would do them all again. And that's, and I think that she's completely honest about that. I don't think she really had any regrets looking back on what she'd done but she but that doesn't mean that she didn't feel badly about some of the things that she chose to do she just knows that she would have done them again 
So I do think that she was a reliable narrator, and I think that if she knew she was not going to be reliable, she wouldn't have said anything at all. I'm excited to fully go into more of my thoughts and feelings on the book in the next video for sure. That I'm, That's gonna be the full book full book feelings and everything. I've like now obviously I've had a lot of time to process it and have my feelings about it but we'll put that all into a video next week but for now thank you so much for watching and I'll meet you back here next Tuesday.